we have listened to the reports uh, of from Mr. Lanchikov on the readiness of the crew and propositions on the members of the main and the backup crew. And we also heard from the state uh, from the designer on the preparation of the facilities. And we have decided that uh, the crew for TMA 18M for the main crew is going to be Volkov as a commander from Roscosmos, flight engineer Andreas Mogensen from the European States Agency, flight engineer two, uh, Aydin Ambetov from uh, Kazakh Space Agency, backup uh, commander Skripochka. Toma Pesky, flight engineer two from European State Agency, and uh, flight engineer two will be Prokopiev Sergey from Roscosmos. Secondly, we decided to go ahead and finish up the preparations of the launch facilities, finish up the propellant fit up and completion of all the work. Thank you very much. Uh, so the State Committee is confirming the decisions, and Yuri Komarov is going to say the final words. Uh, uh, dear colleagues, today we confirm the members of the main crew for tomorrow morning launch. Uh, uh, the crews have completed the training, and they meet all the requirements to be ready for the launch. And I just wanted to say that for the commander of the main crew, Sergei Volkov, this is the third space flight. He has been in open space three times already. And uh, tomorrow he's having a main task for you to open, to show the way to space, to new two crew members, two rookies. <laughs> and uh, I want to commend um, Sergei's professionalism and his devotion to the space uh, activities so that he will do everything fine. Uh, so I understand that you are going beyond the borders of the Earth. And I understand how important it is to have this successful flight. I'm Bill Ambedov. After a long time, he is the first preparation. He is the first uh, um, member of the Kazakh space station. He didn't have exactly that much time to prepare for the space flight. The decision was made not that long ago, and I want to say that together with our colleagues with Kazakhstan, he has done a lot of work uh, to compress the training and uh, to make sure that he is absolutely ready. And now we can state that he is absolutely ready that mission was completed, it has been realized. Then today the decision was made uh, to actually confirm that he is a member of this flight. It is important for our colleagues in Kazakhstan, and we all will be rooting for him. Uh, also, I hope that the uh, backup crew is goes also going to be uh, the main crew sometime in the future, and we will be helping you here on the ground to support you and be with you in every sense of the word. And uh, now, Michael Thomas Afrizini is going to say a few words. We're, uh, about to embark on an ambitious mission, and we're looking forward to having you on board ISS. Господа, перед вами предстоит амбициозная миссия. С нетерпением ждем вашего прибытия на МКС. As mentioned, it's, uh, it's ambitious not only uh, for the program, uh, but also for uh, each of you as individuals. Миссия амбициозная не только для программы, но также для каждого из вас. So, uh, for Aden, your uh, representative of a country that's been supporting the program uh, like it is today for launch and landing, uh, for, for many, many years, and so it's great to have you coming uh, on board ISS. Aiden, you represent the program, a country that supported the flights, and 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 the the program as today, so we wait for your arrival on MKS. Andy, as, as Mr. Kamarov mentioned, this is your first flight, and the first flight of a Dane uh, into space, so that's a great, great honor. And of course, you're... Uh, 
your alma mater is the same as mine, and so it's, uh, to me, that's also fantastic uh, uh, representation on board ISS. Андреас, конечно, для вас, как господин Комаров сказал сегодня, это первый полет, вы будете первым датчанином в космосе. Мы с вами, в принципе, во многом похожи, я с нетерпением ожидаю вашего прибытия на МКС. And Sergey, of course, you've been to ISS twice already, you know better than most. Uh, so we're looking forward to having you there. And of course, uh, you're uh, not only tasked with uh, bringing this crew to orbit, but also bringing our one-year crew uh, home in March. So we're looking forward to that. Сергей, для вас это третий космический полет, с нетерпением ожидаем вас на МКС. Конечно, ваша задача не только доставить двух членов экипажа на борт, но также затем вернуть двух членов участников космического полета, годового полета. Поэтому с нетерпением ожидаем и этого также от вас. Uh, for the ISS program, this is a rare opportunity to have nine crew on board. Uh, and from my estimation, it looks like we'll get about twice uh, the utilization during that short period. So we're looking forward to, uh, to the productivity that you guys represent as well. Для программы МКС это очень интересное время, потому что мы ожидаем прибытия девяти членов экипажа на борту будут в это время. С нетерпением ожидаем выполнение научных исследований, которых два раза будет больше в рамках данного периода, и надеемся, что все пройдет штатно и успешно у вас. Поэтому с нестерпением ожидаем вашего прибытия на орбиту, наслаждайтесь полетом и будем ждать вашего возвращения на Землю. И от лица международной, программы Международной космической станции желаем вам всего самого наилучшего и удачного полета. Слово предоставляется председателю аэрокосмической по инвестициям и развитию Республики Казахстан Талгатом Мангудовичу Мусабаеву. Uh, good day, dear colleagues. That is a very exciting moment for me to participate here in a state committee because I'm here on this side of the glass wall, and usually I'm on the other side seven times already I was there when the committee was presiding. Four times I was a backup and twice I was in space, actually. Today, it is my pleasure to say that we have prepared our new cosmonaut. Uh, it, the decision has not been made until recently, and uh, uh, 14 and a half years ago, that was last time, a Kazakh, that I'm talking about myself, flew in space. And I hope today is not the last time when a Kazakh is flying in space. We can talk a lot about this. Uh, Sergei, I have known since he was a kid. Alexander was also my colleague for a long time. And uh, I would like to say uh, a toast probably, but it will take too long because Kazakh toasts are too long. Uh, now I want to say that I'm full of excitement and I'm probably more excited than people who are sitting behind a glass wall. Uh, uh, I would like to wish the main crew to be successful, to be successful in all stages of this work, uh, rendezvous, docking, uh, all the work on the station. For the backup crew, I wish best of luck and be ready for everything. I would like from myself personally and from Cosmos organization to thank Roscosmos personally and the lead of Roscosmos for all the great work that has been done in compressed time to prepare our cosmonaut and uh, that was done well he did really well and uh, I want to thank all the staff of Gagarin Space Station and personally Yuri Lanchikov for paying special attention to be uh, that well disposed to and uh, careful in what has been done. And, uh, I want to thank everybody who is participating in this event and in space preparation, flight preparation in general. And I wish you all the best, all the best, not only flight, but in life, okay?
Perfect. Now, uh, the General Director of the European Space Agency, Jean Werner. Good morning. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a very special honor and pleasure for me to have this opportunity to talk to you today. <coughs> we heard about that two of the cosmonauts are flying for the first time, and I'm also flying for the first time, but not in orbit, but here to the State Commission as a DG of ESA. The International Space Station, today's launch, and the cooperation in space is for me of utmost importance, especially in times as we are facing right now on a political level. Despite some earthly problems, here we are working together, a Russian cosmonaut, a Kazakh cosmonaut, and a European astronaut of Danish nationality. Несмотря на все проблемы, существующие на Земле, на орбите будут работать вместе российский космонавт, казахский космонавт и европейский астронавт. This aspect of cooperation would alone enough for me to say yes, we are doing this together with our partners to fly to the International Space Station. И такой аспект сотрудничества позволяет, дает мне полное право сказать, да, мы осуществляем вместе в рамках кооперации эту программу, этот полет на Международную космическую станцию. However, at the same time, important research is done, research and science at the station, and therefore I'm hoping that you will bring back some new results from the station. Однако нужно упомянуть еще один важный аспект. Те научные исследования, которые запланированы в рамках данного полета, и я жду, что вы вернетесь на Землю со значимыми результатами этих экспериментов, этих исследований. In addition, you are ambassadors, ambassadors for the youth, that something has to be done for the future, that we really can define the future for a peaceful world. И uh, должен отметить, что вы uh, выполняете функцию послов, послов, которые uh, представляют будущее, представляют uh, возможности, которые могут быть реализованы в будущем на орбите, uh, используя средства космоса. Therefore, I thank very much NASA, Roscosmos and Cascosmos that the European Space Agency can be a partner for ISS and beyond. И я хотел бы поблагодарить партнеров по программе Роскосмос, НАСА и Казкосмос за возможность Европейского космического агентства участвовать в этой, в этой замечательной международной совместной программе. So, Sergey, I ask you, of course, to take care of the other two crewmates. You are the most experienced one. You are from Russia. It's a pleasure for us to have you as a commander on board. Сергей, я также хотел бы обратиться к вам с просьбой о том, чтобы вы заботились о двух остальных членов экипажа, о двух новичках, особенно учитывая тот факт, что вы представляете Роскосмос, вы обладаете достаточным опытом, и мы надеемся на вас, и надеемся, что весь экипаж благополучно прибудет на борт и вернется на Землю. And I Dean, you are following the successful tradition of uh, my dear friend Talgat in space, so all the best for you. И следуя примеру моему коллеге, господину Мусабаеву, также всего хорошего, удачи вам. And finally, Andreas. Andreas, you are something like the Danish Yuri Gagarin. И несколько отдельных слов для Андреаса. Андреас, ну вы датский Юрий Гагарин. 
and I wish you all the best. You have, uh, I hope you have a fine and excellent time on board and that you will also inspire the Danish people, the youth, but also the European people, that space is really a very important issue for all of us. So I wish all three of you a safe launch, an excellent time on, on board of ISS, not only for the experiments, but also have a look outside to the Earth, what is going on here, and then, of course, a safe trip home. Thank you very much. Now we have the commander of the main crew, Sergey Volkov, saying a few words. Uh, uh, dear members of uh, the state committee, my friends, of course, uh, that was a great speech from all of you today. My feel, feeling is that we have already launched. Uh, we are so filled with energy that you gave us. I would like to say the words of gratitude and thank you for preparing us, preparing uh, the systems, the preparation for us in a medical sense. Uh, I want to thank our backup crew uh, who is doing everything to make sure that we will launch successfully and then later on they will be main crew. Uh, we have a good crew. Everybody is trained well at the needed level. With Andreas we have been uh, training for one and a half years, uh, adding uh, for three and a half months managed to become the full, uh, fully trained member of our uh, crew. He is uh, a fully prepared uh, flight engineer for so use. Uh, so thank you. Now, Andreas Morgensen will say a few words, the flight engineer for Soyuz. Dear colleagues, I am very happy. It was a long period of training, and we are ready. We are a good crew uh, because of you, because of the uh, Gagarin Training Center. I want to say thank you very much to all of you. Now, Flight Engineer of Team 18 Adin Ambetov. Uh, dear members of the State Committee, dear colleagues, I would like to uh, thank uh, Mr. Nazarbayev for his contribution to uh, space industry in Kazakhstan. Uh, Mr. Masambayev, Roscosmos leadership to you and mostly to uh, uh, my crew members, uh, Volkov and Mogensen, who have accepted me and worked with me so well. And now we can be sure that everything will be done as planned. Now, backup crew commander Alex Kripochka, your word. First of all, thank you very much for training us, uh, to keeping us straight. And uh, our crew is prepared in full, and we are ready to be good backup, and we are ready to keep working. Uh, now, flight engineer Thomas Peske for the backup crew, dear colleagues and members of the state committee, thank you very much to everybody who participated in my training. And uh, uh, we complete all the tasks that were laid before us, and I hope that we will not have actually to replace the main crew, but we will be uh, also well trained for future flights. Uh, I learned a lot, and I also watched my colleagues working there. My good example, good example for me, and I hope we will have an opportunity to become a uh, main crew together with Sergey and Alec. Uh, now, uh, Sergey Prokopiev, flight engineer to backup crew, the members of the state committee, uh, and everybody who is here. It is so nice to be here. This is a great responsibility. I would like to say thank you to everybody who actually assigned me to become the backup crew member. Thank you very much to everybody who participated in my training, and thank you very much to the main crew and my colleagues of the backup crew. 
Uh, we have learned a lot. We acquired a lot during the period of training. And um, also, I want to say thank you to Sergei Alexandrovich because he has given me a lot as my mentor. And thank you very much to the crew members. Sergey Andreas, I'm the, from the behalf of State Committee. We congratulate you with this responsibility to fly on Soyuz TM-18. And uh, we wish you a great flight and a safe return. This is completing the State Committee. Uh, dear colleagues, hello. It is great to see you here at Baikonur. As you know, about 15, 20 minutes ago, the State Committee completed its meeting, and the main crew of the Soyuz 18 TM has been confirmed. We have Commander Sergey Volkov from Roscosmos of Russia. Uh, flight engineer Andreas Mogensen of uh, ESA and Aydin Ambetov from Kazakhstan, flight engineer to uh, Sergey Volkov uh, has been 188 days uh, in, will be in space and uh, 10 days for his crew members. Alex Kipichka is going to be the commander of the backup crew, the flight engineer, Tom Pieske and uh, uh, from France uh, uh, and Sergei Prokof, uh, Prokopiev from Roscosmos. We are glad to welcome you at Baikonur. So as you know, the meeting of the State Commission has been finished just 15 minutes ago. According to the results of the meeting, the prime crew of Soyuz TMA 18M manned transport vehicle has been approved as follows. Sergei Volkov, Soyuz TMA 18M commander, Roscosmos, Russia. Andreas Mogensen, flight engineer, ESA, Denmark. Aydin Ambeto, Flight Engineer to Kazakhstan. Estimated mission duration for cosmonaut Sergei Volkov is 188 days. Mission duration for Andreas Mogensen and Aydin Ambetov is 10 days. The Commission has approved the following members of the backup crew. Oleg Skripochka, Soyuz Commander, Roscosmos, Russia. Thomas Pesquet, Flight Engineer, ESA, France. Sergei Prokopi, Flight Engineer to Roscosmos, Russia. Uh, there was a lady standing on the table. We would like you to get off the table. That is not common here. And okay, we'll continue. On the at 7.34 Moscow time on the 2nd of September, the launch is going to occur. And this is the beginning of the press conference. At 10.34 local time, 7.34 Moscow time. So we begin pro-launch crew press conference. And traditionally, Roscosmos Television is welcome to ask the first question. Good morning, everybody. Congratulations on being assigned to the main crew. Today is the 1st of September. Uh, are you we going to have any educational pro programs uh, for the whole crew, for you, Sergey, and for those who are going to be on it for 10 days? Yes, of course, uh, one of the traditional uh, experiments, payloads, that is a payload program that is are uh, going to be for the long duration and for the short duration flight as well. Adin uh, is going to perform experiment uh, Gagarin from space and um, uh, he will be talking about his mission um, uh, and also the great beginning. This is another experiment that is purely educational. We have um, another experiment, Spheres, that is educational and ham radio where we talk to school children live. Rob Nabius, NASA Television uh, for Sergey. Uh, Sergey, you're launching on this Soyuz vehicle that uh, you will bring home next March with Scott Kelly and Mikhail Kornienko to wrap up their year in space. Uh, you'll be in charge of their return. How complicated will the final preparations be? Uh, 
to safely bring them home and wrap up their unprecedented stay on the ISS. Uh, вопрос для Сергея Волкова, Роб Невес, телевидение НАСА. Сергей, вы стартуете на корабле «Союз», который в марте следующего года доставит домой Скотта Келли и Михаила Корниенко, тем самым завершая их годовой полет на Международной космической станции. Вы будете отвечать за их возвращение. Насколько сложной будет окончательная подготовка к их возвращению домой и обеспечение их безопасности по завершению беспрецедентного длительного полета на борту МКС? We are all used to uh, half-year missions, pretty much. Of course, the crew is going through special training and OBTs. The crew is usually performs all the trainings on Soyuz and ISS. Сейчас получается Миша и Скотт. Right now Michael and Scott has been on the station without special training. They are basically paying attention mostly to utilization. Their life support, scientific experiment, and station support. They they are busy with their own experiments, and they do not have any time for Soyuz training. That is why I expect that most likely we'll have some additional training on Soyuz operations right before return. We'll have probably more than usually for undocking and for return. Some more additional trainings are expected to be performed before our return. Trainings on Soyuz reentry, especially and landing. I think everything will go well because Scott and Misha and us, we have been training as one crew, we have mutual understanding. I think it will work fine because we've been trained together and we had a good crew and we had a good teamwork and I think we won't have any issues. I would like to ask uh, the Danish astronaut Andreas uh, Mogensen to explain how you're going to prepare for the launch for the next couple, uh, next hours until the launch, and uh. also mentally how are you going to prepare? Вопрос датскому астронавту Андреасу Могенсону. Расскажите, пожалуйста, как вы готовились практически и мысленно к полету на международную космическую станцию? Well, there's, uh, to be honest, not a lot of time left now. Uh, after this press conference, we'll have some time to spend. Uh, with our family and friends, and then already at uh, 5.30 p.m. this afternoon, we'll be going to bed uh, to get ready to get up at uh, 1.30 in the morning to prepare for, well, to, to start our final preparation, which is basically uh, dressing, doing some final medical checks, and then putting on the spacesuit and going out to the uh, launch pad. So for the most part, uh, our preparations are done. The uh, State Commission has given the green light for us to launch. And all that's left for us now is uh, to say goodbye to our families, relax, and, and as you say, prepare mentally ourselves. На самом деле не так много времени у нас осталось. Сейчас по окончанию пресс-конференции некоторое время мы посвятим своим друзьям и семьям. Далее мы пойдем спать порядка 5:30 сегодня днем, потому что нам предстоит ранний подъем в час 30 уже ночи. Мы должны будем встать, чтобы выполнить некоторые медицинские процедуры, которые мы обычно выполняем перед стартом. Соответственно, большая часть уже пройдена, то есть осталось совсем немного, осталось выполнить медицинские процедуры, отправиться на площадку для одевания скафандров, проверки их на герметичность и уже далее отправиться в полет. Добрый день, Первый канал Россия. Uh, good day, Russia Channel One. First of all, good luck to all of you to make sure everything goes as planned. Andreas, a question for you. Uh, for you, that will be the first flight and for your country as well. Probably when uh, you were a kid, you had no idea it's going to happen. When did you become a, a cosmonaut? Why and how difficult was it become the first cosmonaut for your country? Если можете говорить на русском. You can speak in Russian. I think I'll speak English better. It was always a dream of mine to become an astronaut, so I'm 
very, very excited to finally be here after so many years, uh, ready to launch in uh, less than 20, 24 hours. Of course, it's uh, it's extra special when when you're the first. Not so much because it was part of the dream, but simply because this is a, a unique opportunity for me to uh, bring more attention to the International Space Station program and all of the important science and expir exploration activities that we do on board the space station. So uh, I'm going to use this uh, flight to the best of my ability to uh, not only bring awareness in Denmark, but all of Europe, hopefully, to my mission and the uh, important research that we do on board the space station. Стать космонавтом для меня было действительно давней мечтой. Я сейчас очень рад, что я нахожусь здесь на предстартовой подготовке и уже полечу в космос менее чем через 24 часа. Я очень горжусь тем, что я являюсь частью программы МКС и особенно частью научной программы, которую мы выполняем на борту МКС. И я э, считаю, что также моя страна, Дания и вся Европа будет также гордиться тем, что я отправляюсь в полет. Здравствуйте, Анна Самоленко. Uh, Анна Самоленко, uh, Южный Space Center. I have a question to all cosmonauts. Your flight is going to be within the framework of the one-year flight. Uh, Sergey and Alec, you will have a uh, joint uh, experiment that is called Mars. And I wonder how are you seeing yourself uh, as a possibly future Mars cosmonaut? That is a difficult question, in fact, because probably thinking about even future programs is good, but it's kind of difficult for me uh, to imagine whether it is realistic or not. Uh, actually, I'm thinking about what is going to happen just now, what is uh, going to happen. I'm talking about the upcoming flight, but I understand that the program is expanding, and maybe in a few years we will be able to fly to Mars. But right now I would like to concentrate on the uh, task at hand. That right now this is just a dream for me to fly to Mars, I think. May I ask a next question? Uh, I think, uh, there's a lot of truth to what uh, Sergei said, uh, especially for us. I mean, we can obviously dream about the future, but at least for the next 10, hopefully maybe more years, the space station will still be uh, our prime focus. Uh, there's still a lot of very, very interesting science and research to be done on board the space station, and that's what we're concentrating on. But at the same time, it's also necessary for, for us and our space agencies to begin to uh, to look to the future and, and begin to plan for what will follow the space station. And uh, that's what partly makes me very, very excited to be an astronaut today, because uh, I, I fully believe that, that we will have a, a very interesting program of, of exploration after the ISS has, uh, has finished. Whether or not it's uh, a return to the moon or further exploration into deeper space to Mars or to, to asteroids. So I think we have a, a lot of uh, things to look forward to in the, in the next 10, 20 years. Mm -hmm. Да, действительно, как уже сказал Сергей, абсолютно правильно, что мы должны стремиться к покорению новых планет. Мы все время мечтали об этом. Уже на протяжении более 10 лет существует Международная космическая станция. Я думаю, еще в ближайшие 10, а то и 20 лет мы будем продолжать совершать полеты на околоземную орбиту. На борту Международной космической станции мы выполняем много научных исследований и экспериментов. Но эти исследования, они также важны для совершения полетов в будущем, к другим планетам, к чему мы стремимся. Я абсолютно уверен в том, что мы добьемся успеха в этом, и в скором будущем мы покорим как Марс, так и другие астероиды. Здравствуйте. Hello. Uh, Евразия uh, from Kazakhstan. A question to Mr. Ambedkov. Uh, first of all, this is your first uh, flight. What will you take as a souvenir with you? Uh, and is it really so that uh, Tereshkova is your second uh, space mother? Our flight is happening 
at this special time. 550 years of uh, Kazakh statehood is going to be celebrated. Also, a constitution is uh, going to uh, celebrate its anniversary this year. I will take the flag of Kazakhstan with me when I was training in 2004. And uh, uh, we had a, uh, we had uh, an interview with uh, uh, Nazarbayev, and I said that there will be time when Kazakh symbols and the statehood the gadgets are going to be in orbit, and this is what I'm going to bring. Uh, so uh, my uh, uh, younger daughter gave me uh, a toy. It is a, a soft toy, uh, a lion, and I'm going to take it with me as well. <laughs> In 2003, on the 16th of June, we started our training, and that was the day, actually, when we celebrated Tereshkova's first flight. So uh, that's why I think... Hello, it is a true statement. I'm a reporter with Danish Television TV2 Denmark. I have a question for our first astronaut, Mr. Morgensen. Are you getting enough sleep? I've talked to people who are a little bit worried. You look as if you're not getting enough sleep. And will you be able to sleep tonight, do you think? I mean, during these uh, past two weeks, we've been, uh, yeah, we've been sleeping well, I think. Um, but certainly, uh, I expect tonight's sleep, not only because we'll be going to bed early at 5.30, but uh, also because of, of all the anticipation and the excitement, tonight's sleep will probably be different than usual. I, <laughs> I'm almost certain of that. Uh, question for Andreas Morgens. Andre, today you will not have much time to sleep tonight. Can you say a few words about that? Uh, I am representing Kazakh newspapers Ulan and Druzhny uh, Rebiata. I have a question for Ambedov. Uh, our kids have sent you greetings uh, uh, for the upcoming flight that will all be given to you. And uh, we had three questions from them. They have been selected. Uh, first of all, have you dreamed uh, when you were a school kid uh, to become a cosmonaut? Uh, second question, uh, who and what helped you uh, to realize that? And uh, uh, the last question, have you always been an A student? Uh, I was wondering whether when you were at school, uh, did you always get A's? To become a cosmonaut, that was my childhood dream. I will tell you a story. My dad and I were working in the field. We were working the hay, the straw, and we were looking at our uh, stars in the sky after the long day of work. Uh, and I was wondering what it is, uh, what was blinking in the sky. I was interested in that. My dad was telling me about it. I was thinking about the sky. I was thinking about what's going on there. And kind of slowly I graduated into uh, thinking about becoming a cosmonaut. I was always good at sports. I was a good student. I uh, was a student at the pilot school, military pilot school, 
And I was an A student, yes. Uh, sometimes my kids and I would be just excited about something else. And once uh, I was even reprimanded by the group of teachers for not doing as good as I was supposed to. To, um, anyway, it was mostly about my behavior, not about my uh, academic uh, studies. Uh, but I was a normal kid. I was a normal kid. At uh, school for young cosmonauts, uh, do you have uh, a lot of kids who have really this opportunity to become a cosmonaut? For the time that I was able uh, to dedicate to this school of young cosmonauts. That was a very popular entity. Over 545 kids has been signed up, and they are very interested in uh, this. Uh, even in the first grades, uh, the kids have a lot of knowledge already in the, about the universe, about the solar system, about the stars. And uh, yes, I, I hope I hope many of them will be successful. Uh, I thought about it a lot, and I was thinking probably the first grade, so the middle school kids will need to be involved already. And that's actually I got my pedagogical education uh, to. Uh, have this opportunity to teach the kids, and this is what I was doing. Now from TAS agency, a question about the utilization program. What experiments, uh, this is a question for all uh, members of the main crew, uh, which of the experiments are most interesting for you, and how, uh, how extensive this utilization program is going to be for you? Since we have two phases in the flight, we have the joint, uh, 45, 46, and the uh, uh, visiting crew expedition 18. During the handover, uh, uh, we will be working uh, Russian-European experiments mostly with, together with Andreas. And we will also have Russian Kazakh experiments, uh, and uh, there will also be standalone European and Kazakh experiments going on. Uh, the main uh, participants are Andreas and Aldin. Uh, I will be helping. And this is Mars experiment from the European agency was specially designed for this expedition. It has unique equipment installed on ISS. Но на самом деле я не скажу, наверное, новых названий экспериментов, потому что практически все эксперименты, они повторяются и... А вы скажите? Uh, probably fluid shift is the most interesting. Mikhail and Scott are working on those. We are participating in this experiment as well. And uh, there is a comparison going on with the results of the half a year uh, mission, one year mission, which procedures are most favorable for uh, preparation of the crew members for return. Uh, so thinking about the long duration flights, we are not going to have uh, rescue crews waiting for us on the Mars surface, right? So that's why we'll have to prepare all of that. Also, other experiments are taking place for research of the Earth. We know that uh, we have a lot of fires, a lot of floodings, and all of these kind of things. I'm not going to talk about the latest news, but we are trying to assist as much as possible from orbit. We are 
uh, working together with the organizations that are studying these events and uh, are trying to help as much as we can. Also, medical experiments are taking place altogether for 45, 46 expeditions. We have 75 experiments altogether. Maybe Andreas will say a few words. What is most interesting for you? Well, uh, uh, what concerns the Earth is interesting for me because that gives you an opportunity to watch the Earth and also participate in experiments on studying some you know, plasma crystal, for example, uh, Coulomb crystal. Uh, and, but this is just uh, hard work, all of it. Well, Sergey already mentioned one of the uh, bigger, more important experiments that we'll be completing together called MARS, which is focusing on muscle atrophy research in space. Uh, and perhaps uh, this is also maybe why I look a little bit more tired today than usual, because I had to get up earlier simply in, in preparation for this experiment. Mm -hmm. uh, because as you know, a lot of things in space uh, are more difficult than here on Earth. So I decided to uh, shave my entire right leg <laughs> this morning. It took a lot of time in the shower since I'm not used to doing that. Um, but it's basically in anticipation of, of Mars where I'll be uh, putting electrodes. Well, Sergey will be putting electrodes on my leg in order to uh, stimulate my uh, muscles, in order to determine uh, my uh, muscle strength in space. So it's a very, very interesting experiment, um, which also involves a little bit of sacrifice on my part, because right now I have a, a one normal leg and one <coughs> completely shaved leg. But, uh, <laughs> Um, no, apart from that, I have a, a very full program of uh, experiments, including several Danish experiments that are very exciting. Uh, in particular, I'll be trying to take photos of uh, gigantic uh, lightning strikes that uh, start from the top of thunder clouds and then continue all the way up into space to an altitude of about 80, 90 kilometers. So hopefully with a little bit of luck, I'll be able to get some fantastic um, pictures of these gigantic lightning strikes and help us understand what effect they have on our atmosphere. Да, как уже упомянул Сергей, у нас будет совместный эксперимент. Этот эксперимент называется Марас. Эксперимент направлен на изучение мышечной атрофии. Соответственно, готовиться к этому эксперименту мне уже приходится сейчас, поэтому сегодня я встал немного раньше обычного. И самое интересное, мне пришлось полностью побрить свою правую ногу, поэтому я провел очень много времени в душе, делая это. Также Сергей, для чего это сделано? Сергей будет накладывать электроды, и мы будем таким образом смотреть, каким образом происходит воздействие. Ну, ввиду выполнения этого эксперимента, мне пришлось также пожертвовать собой в некоторой мере, потому что сейчас у меня одна нормальная нога, другая нога у меня побрита полностью. Вот. Также я с нетерпением жду той прекрасной возможности, чтобы оказаться на борту Международной космической станции, чтобы заняться фотографированием Земли из космоса, чтобы получить фантастические фотографии, фантастические изображения нашей атмосферы. Спасибо большое. Агентство Интерфакс. Thank you very much. Interfax Agency. Roman Kondratsev, Sergey Volkov, question for you. When your crew comes to the station, we have nine people over there. How are you all going to fit there? And where are you going to sleep? Yes, uh, back in March, we discussed that situation, who is going to be placed where. I was a backup crew member for Pavel Kelly and Kornienko. Uh, the station is quite large, and uh, uh, there are a few places where you can get to sleep for a few days. Uh, uh, just based on my uh, previous experiments, I volunteered to sleep at airlock just because I know how I can set myself over there. Scott and I already discussed that. And Andreas, uh, uh, just like other European experiments, uh, uh, astronauts would sleep either in uh, Columbus or European or Japanese module. Uh, we'll figure out. We'll figure it out. We have uh, good uh, 
locations for sleeping. Uh, the Russian segment may be, you know, if he wants to sleep on the ceiling, we can probably find that as well. Uh, maybe in MRM-1 or MRM-2, uh, or maybe somewhere even on the U.S. segment. Uh, all of that has been already proposed and discussed. Um, I apologize. May I ask a question here for Aiden Ambedov, Grigory Bidenko from Kazakh uh, uh, Press. Uh, tell us about your science program. And also, you were going to take uh, uh, a flag uh, from a military pilot organization of Kazakhstan. Are you going to do that? Well, experiment Uragan, relaxation, content, interaction, uh, Coulomb, Christmas, uh, Crystal, and uh, these are the experiments that we are going to take. Uh, also, Kazakh um, scientists uh, developed a special uh, experiment. From you know that any material uh, um, absorbs radiation and then and then uh, uh, releases. You know that 200 more is the level of radiation on the station and on the ground. And um, here what I'm going to do. I already uh, have the data on what I have absorbed here on the ground and uh, in orbit. Uh, uh, the dosimeter is going to help me to record the, day, record the level of radiation that I'm absorbing in space and uh, from like, certain areas of my body, like from my brain, what is going to hold. Then also content. And now this is a psychological experiment. But this is on interaction of the crew members before flight, during the flight, and after the flight. And and that is uh, assessment of uh, psychological compatibility for uh, future selections uh, of uh, cosmonauts and astronauts of different uh, uh, mentalities and different from different countries. Uh, uh, also, relaxation experiment is going to take place. Uragan experiment that is monitoring of uh, the Earth's surface. Uh, uh, for the analysis of possible ecological events. Uh, and another question that you had about what I'm going to take. Yes, I am taking a flag of, uh, because I'm a military pilot, you know, I'm going to take a flag of my organization with me. Uh, I have been uh, a representative of the military for Kazakhstan, and I'm taking this, yes. Thank you so much. Next question, please. For Sergei Volkov, yesterday we met your dad. He is Alexander Volkov, a famous Russian cosmonaut. And he said that probably it is a mission of our family to bring Kazakh cosmonauts to space, just like he did. You are doing this now. Uh, so we are wishing you a good uh, flight and do everything as planned. How would you assess your crew members? What would you say about your colleagues who are rookies? Among cosmonauts, there is no accident that we are here. Uh, everybody who is selected, doesn't matter whether they come from Europe or from Russia. Uh, uh, Adir has been uh, training with us as a representative of uh, Kazakhstan, but also a part of the Russian uh, uh, space program. We are all motivated the same way. When you're close to realizing your dream, uh, to fly in space uh, when you have given so much so much of yourself so much time to this uh, to be here to be behind this glass wall uh, as a main crew to fly uh, 
It doesn't matter whether it is your first flight or your fifth flight. Everybody is doing, giving his best. Everybody is excelling at the exams, preparing as much as they can. That's why both Andreas and uh, Aiden have given as much as possible. I would say it is the maximum because you have to have a reserve always because the flight itself is more than the training. Uh, however, they have given as much as possible and uh, they are doing great. I have no doubt that we are absolutely ready for the mission and I'm happy to be with them. Here. Thank you. Next question. Uh, TV2 Denmark, a question for Andreas. Uh, we talked to uh, your family uh, yesterday, and it, it was uh, quite evident to see that when they saw the rollout, that all of a sudden it was very real. And probably they had more emotions um, yesterday than they have had during your training period. Uh, is it also getting more real for you? Do you have more emotions now? And what have you told them to comfort them? Certainly, I mean, flying to space is, is something very, very unique. And I think one of the difficulties for myself has been to imagine what it will be like or to, to yeah, to, to kind of understand what it will be like. So the closer we get to launch, um, first, the first at the first fit check when we had a chance to sit in the rocket, the second fit check when we again had to to sit in it, of course, and of course today when we're less than 24 hours away, um, the emotions become stronger. That's certainly uh, the case, simply because the, the time is near and it's we we feel it's it's more more real. And and speaking to my family, I can feel uh, from them too that that they're becoming more uh, emotional. Um, but. You know, we, we talk about the training that we've had. Um, I have full confidence in, in my uh, um, crewmates. Uh, they've had a chance to beat my crewmates. Uh, they're very confident of them. So it's, uh, I mean, we, we, we talk about it, but of course it's, it's an emotional time, especially when it's your, your first space flight. I mean, that's just natural. Um, I mean, the, the rocket is, is incredible to see. It's, it's almost like a, a living being. Uh, and tomorrow when we uh, climb up in there, it really will be a, a living thing, uh, you know, trembling and, and gas coming off of it. And yeah, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be emotional. That, that's, that's definitely sh for sure. And I, I just think that's a, a normal human reaction to have. Вопрос Андрея Сумогинсу на телевидении Дании. Андрея, вчера мы разговаривали с вашей семьей, они присутствовали на вывозе ракеты. Мы говорили о том, насколько эмоциональное сейчас у них состояние. Пожалуйста, расскажите о ваших эмоциях, что вы сейчас чувствуете в преддверии вашего полета. Да, действительно, полет в космос – это уникальное событие, и мы все это понимаем. Но я сейчас абсолютно чувствую себя уверенным, и я вижу, что мои члены экипажа уверены и готовы к полету. Мы провели первую примерку, где у нас была возможность познакомиться с кораблем, посидеть внутри, познакомиться с оборудованием. Также мы провели вторую примерку, на которой мы убедились в том, что наш корабль готов. Вчера действительно состоялся вывоз ракеты, и мы видим, что время старта уже близко. Да, действительно, мы, нас переполняют эмоции как меня, так и мою семью. Тем более, это мой первый полет в космос. Ракета — это потрясающее зрелище. Я с нетерпением жду возможности сегодня утром уже подняться туда на лифте и отправиться в свой космический полет. Thank you, dear colleagues. Uh, three questions. Uh, Kazakh press uh, to all cosmonauts. Uh, uh, is there any omen as what you can take to space, what you should not? Uh, first to uh, Kazakh cosmonauts. There was information that uh, some Kazakh products are going to be taken, like food products, kumis, uh, milk, for example. Uh, also, the news that you are actually flying has not been quite accepted. I was wondering when you found out that you had been assigned that, what, what did you feel? What were your emotions? 
На самом деле, вот, как вы сказали, примет. In fact, as you said, uh, is there any Aman? What is good luck? What is bad luck? It is nothing like this. There is just a list of items that you should not take uh, for different reasons. Um, you can take personal items, like uh, probably you shouldn't be taking any sharp objects uh, um, unless it is a tool. Uh, uh, there is a long list of items that cannot be taken to space, but there has nothing to do with omens or any kind of superstition. Uh, we have a certain schedule, a certain program of work, and we follow definite traditions. Uh, yesterday we watched a movie that is called White uh, Sun of the Desert. Uh, also, we planted the trees. Uh, that is also a tradition. Uh, also, we are meeting with the press here. That is also a tradition. And uh, uh, Adil is going to tell you more. Uh, this experiment has done six so that has uh, uh, the food selection of traditional Kazakh products. Those are sublimated um, uh, food things with uh, uh, supplements uh, uh, that will help uh, keep Im uh, immunity uh, up and uh, decrease fatigue. Those are sublimated products. They do not look like normal food. Uh, those are packets. Triangle uh, um, packets. Uh, we have a uh, soup carcho that is uh, also uh, horse meat in a dry form, curd. Uh, uh, Taranshek and uh, biscuits. Those have been uh, developed not only for space uh, consumption, but uh, just for extreme uh, preparation, maybe before certain um, uh, sports events, things like this. What I felt when I found out that there has been a sign. You know, when you graduate from school, you are happy, right? When you say get to a school or university where you wanted to, this is about the same. I had a great feeling when I myself uh, flew my plane. That was an amazing feeling. And the feeling that I was assigned here I was probably not comparable to anything like that. That is a great joy. The great joy. <laughs> Thank you. Dominique Dottin, European Space Agency. I have a question to Thomas Pesquet, because you're, you're the backup crew. Is not it too frustrating to stay on the ground? Uh, no, I, I don't think it's frustrating. It, it's part of the whole process. That's how you learn. Um, today, the, the main job of the backup crew is not to try and steal the prime crew's seat on the, on the rocket. It's instead to help them and uh, as best as we can. So we've, we've tried to do this. Um, so that's the first. That's the first thing. That's the first thing. Second thing is uh, is actually to learn. It's a learning process. So, uh, and you learn from from the best. So I've had the, the opportunity to uh, to learn from Sergey, from Oleg, uh, very experienced crew members. So, it it was it was all good. And uh, now I'm looking forward to coming back uh, as a prime crew uh, in November next year. The main crew, please. Thank you so much. Best of luck.
Hi folks, this is Brian May and 